end with this example. Here we have the Telstra NextG network. This is the coverage of the Telstra NextG network to two, uh, to uh, 98, now it's, it's, uh, it's essentially 99% of the people uh, in the country. Now, uh, uh, go to the next slide. That's the ADSL network, including the uh, ADSL, the, the broadband up to 20 megabits that we just turned on in the last 64 days. Uh, go to the next one. The next one is the oval that was just canceled. Now, what do you see there when you look at Oval? When, when people, I love it when people, the day they canceled the $1 billion tax giveaway to uh, Optus and Oval, uh, people say, well, what are we going to do now? We're not going to have access. Hell, you wouldn't have had any more access with Oval than you have already. There was not one new area that was going to be covered by Oval. And so this is the kind of, you know, these are the kinds of furfies that are out there that Oval was going to do all these wonderful things. And, and, and it's even worse than that. Let me give you the next one. The next one is, is uh, Vodafone. Vodafone's just announced, not with government money, but with their own shareholders' money, they're going to build a 3G network to compete with us. Well, that's going to make it tougher for us, but that's a good thing. Competition is a good thing. And one of the things Saul predicted was, as soon as we get our next GN network up and running, people are going to see that people use it. They're going to see you can make a lot of money off it because people want to use it. And somebody else is going to come in and, and overbuild, you know, to compete with us. And guess what? Vodafone is doing that. So if you take the Vodafone network, the ADSL network, and our 3G network, you can't even see Optus in there. Optus and Opal. You can't even see it. This thing was a scam to start with. And, and then people say, well, look, we're not going to have WiMAX. Well, WiMAX is a loser. And so it seems to me that... Um, you know, when you look at these maps, you begin to see um, uh, that the fact is, number one, there's a lot available in uh, uh, rural, uh, regional, and rural Australia. Uh, number two, there's even growing competition in regional and rural Australia. And there are choices between wireline and wireless uh, in regional and rural Australia. And as the new government's policy rolls out, there's going to be even more choices. Uh, and those choices are not going to just be infrastructure. On the IP networks, the choices are going to be applications. So you, your application may come from Telstra, it may come from Vodafone, it may come from uh, uh, AAPT, it may come from who knows who. But, but, but that's the beauty of a, the way I like to think about it is an IP network, an internet protocol network, is like a, uh, the, the bar in a clothes closet. The bar is not what's important, that's made out of glass, it's called fiber. What's important are the hangers that you put on it. And anybody can put a hanger on an IP network. It's not like the old analog networks where you had to go to the phone company to, uh, to put your hanger on there. And this is the published Optus 3G coverage. I have the arrows there so you don't miss where they are. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I just think that there's been a lack of reality in the public discussion, and especially in the media discussion, of what the Optus Opal thing was really about. You know, there's nothing like a picture to tell, you know, the truth. And I think that the truth is that uh, nothing much was going to be gained by Optus Opal in the way of coverage, and nothing was going to be gained in terms of quality of uh, transmission and applications. Nothing. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, and by 2010 or 2011, uh, WiMAX is going to represent about 5% of the global market share in wireless. And ask yourself the question who makes, who does innovations for 5%? Nobody does. You do innovations for GSM, that's going to have about 85% of global market share. And, 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 the, uh, and, and who's doing GSM? We're doing GSM, Hutchison's doing GSM, uh, Vodafone's doing GSM. You know, the people who have their heads screwed on right are doing GSM, because that's the way the rest of the world's going. And, and in the business of technology, you want to be in an area where people are investing, where people are innovating, where people are doing things, so the people who are your customers will have more choices, not fewer choices, Cheaper choices, not more expensive choices. Uh, mass market choices, not just customized choices. So I think that no matter how you look at what's happened, that the, uh, the developments uh, over the past, over the transition since the new government have been very positive for the whole country, especially positive for regional, rural, and remote Australia. And as this RFP process unfolds and a decision is made, somebody is selected to do the build out, 
that we should have even better news for regional, rural, and remote Australia. You know, the fact is that, that, that you know, this is an example of, of how, you know, technology is improving the quality of life in rural areas, improving the ability of people to do inventory control, improving the ability of people, of farmers, to keep track of their, of their cattle and their sheep and that kind of thing. And it's also improving uh, the, the management of public health around the world. The World Health Organization wants to have better ways to keep track of herds so they can do some reverse uh, investigation if mad cow disease breaks out or something. And uh, so, so I think that, that as we, we think about these things, and, and the other thing is I, I asked uh, one, of the, one of the people there, I said, well, what about people who can't afford to all this stuff? I mean, how do they, uh, who maybe only have 200 head of cattle, say, well, Apparently there are a couple guys in the vicinity there who started a little business to help people do RFID stuff. So guess what? Here you have technology creating jobs. Maybe it's only two jobs, but down the road it's two more jobs. Up the road it's 13 jobs. Down across the patch it's, uh, it's 10 jobs. That's how jobs are created in a turbulent, creative, uh, innovative economy. And it's not something that Graham Samuel can manage. It's not something that uh, ACCC can manage. You know, we have to have the confidence in ourselves to kind of let things go. And if people do something wrong, beat them up, put them in jail, chop their heads off, do whatever you want to do to them. <laughs> but to hold everybody, you know, on a leash so that nothing happens, so that nothing happens, and then to have a national, your only two national newspapers celebrating the complacency, and then wonder why is nothing happening in Australia? Well, guess what? Things are happening in Australia because Telstra stepped up and made them happen. We've invested in the bush. We've invested in this country. You know, we're out there. You know, if you see an office truck in the bush, it's either lost or stolen. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't happen. And, uh, and so, so I think that, you know, as, as, as we think about where things are going in the future, the fact is that we've got to, and this isn't just about Telstra, we've got to unleash the telecommunications industry in this country to serve the people, to serve the customer not to serve Graham Samuel, not to serve the five commissioners on the ACCC. They ought to be watchdogs, not players. They're in there trying to eat the dog food. You know, they ought to just watch and make sure that what we do is okay and not breaking any laws and not harming the public interest, not uh, hurting the consumer, uh, and we ought to be investing, we ought to be doing things that are good for the country. That's, our, that's what we should do. You know, we, Saul's always said, What's good for Australia is good for Telstra, not the other way around. What's good for Australia is good for Telstra, because if it's good for Australia, Australia is going to grow and prosper. And if Australia grows and prosper, everybody in this country that makes electricity, that sells uh, energy, that uh, sells telecommunication services, uh, that uh, sells railroad tickets, I don't care who it is that provides basic services like Telstra and Vodafone and others do. Everybody wins when the country prospers, and that's what drives what we do every day. Thanks very much.